Sex is the life force energy that runs through us all. Can you use sexual energy for your spiritual evolution or perhaps for emotional healing? Is it even possible? Clinical sexologist Dr. Martha Tara Lee will explore all these and more on Eros Evolution on Om Times Radio. Welcome to Eros Evolution, where sexuality and spirituality meets. This is Dr. Martha Tara Lee of Eros Coaching. I'm a clinical sexologist and I'm based in Singapore. My company is uh, called Eros Coaching and you can find me on eroscoaching.com. Today's show is a very special one. It's a recap and a reflect. And uh, I've done this for the second time. This is the second time I'm doing it. And I did that uh, recap, this recap on uh, episode 16, and uh, today it would be episode 31st. What have we learned about sexuality and spirituality so far? I've invited many, many guests, and each time I do a reflect and recap, it's really a time to look at who I've invited and what I've learned from them and what has actually contributed to the piece of being able to further the discussion of the link between sexuality and spirituality. So we'll be recapping 14 episodes today and let's uh, start. I'm just recovering from flu so I probably sound a little bit different and maybe I'm a little bit off today as well. However, the show must go on. So at episode 17, we had Felicia Hunt. She is a fellow colleague of mine who is studying at Sex Coach U. And she has very interesting background because unlike me, she also has some other training in uh, transgen transgenerational analysis and also uh, some training in counter transference and during the show she uh, obviously she talks about the link between sexuality and spirituality for her spirituality is uh, something where we are connected to something bigger than ourselves it, we are connected to questioning the meaning of life to universal human experience when we talk about sexuality to her it's about the quality of being sexual and it is related to sexual orientation sexual behavior and sexual development being open to our sexuality to her means being connected to life and the space and the world around us being our authentic true self to her means being connected to our sexuality and during the show, she gave us concrete takeaways. Her takeaways would be in order to begin to be connected to our sexuality and spirituality, one needs to practice mindfulness. A very good way would be meditation. In the show, she recommended first becoming aware of our presence, listening to our breath, setting the intention for the day, and making the commitment to live our life in happiness. To do so, we could practice 45, to, uh, 45 minutes to an hour every day on self-care. Even if we can't do that, we could start off by doing 15 to 20 minutes of meditation. One can do so by listening to lots of uh, YouTube videos that's available. Uh, through the use of technology and also even attending a yoga class. So for those of you who are interested in learning more about what uh, Felicia had to talk about, counter-transference, as uh, also her, 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 her background with working with sexual assault survivors and the topic of transgen transgenerational curses and um, how that continues to affect us, you would be interested to listen to Felicia Hunt's uh, show 
on episode 17. In episode 18, I had Lindsay Hagerman, and the title of the show was Let Nature Inspire the Arts of Life, Arts of Love, sorry. During the show, she talked about the link between nature and with spirituality and with our sexuality. She introduced the show by talking about how nature was, uh, to her, is shameless, how the genitals of plants are, are open, and this is how they get pollinated. Uh, sex is everywhere in nature and it is celebrated. Unfortunately, this is very much repression suppressed uh, when it comes to us humans. When we connect with our sexuality, this is when we are also connected to creativity, flow and spirit. We begin to get a sense of a deeper, bigger meaning and purpose. And there's deep wealth that is available in nature. So uh, her show had a lot of uh, lusciousness and her voice was just and presence was just very beautiful. It really helped me to appreciate nature as well as ecology. She talks about how sexuality and ecology has a flow of life. And when we begin to think, feel and observe much more deeply, we begin to realize that we are part of this ecosystem. Our sexuality has this um, thing of holding us back when we are not aware of it, just as how uh, the environment, uh, the environmental challenges is making life much more difficult for all of us. She also talked about some very interesting things such as creating a community where you live off earth and how she is part of a community where uh, they are polyamorous. By this, this means that they share partners and they also share earth as a partner. They are wedded to the land. They do not see uh, earth as a resource. Instead, they see earth as being alive, erotic. And when, our, when we heal our sexuality, we want to also uh, heal earth because this is where we come from. She talked about uh, the eco-sex movement and what it actually means, how it's moving from having a goddess culture before now talking about God as a father and the link between all that with how there are people who are now seeing Earth as a lover. So if you're interested to listen to more about the link between our ecology with our sexuality and spirituality, you would want to listen to episode 18. Uh, Lindsay Hagerman, as well as Serena, who's also another guest, uh, later in the uh, future episode, they are part, they are the editors of this book called Eco Sexuality. So you you may want to check it out. In episode 19, I had Amy Marsh. She talked about re-imaging intimacy. She introduced how hypnos hypnosis is able to help us with our sexuality. So she introduced two things to me in the show. One is sexological hypnosis, which is using hypnosis to help with sexological problems or challenges that people have, for instance, vaginismus, premature ejaculation, delayed ejaculation, low sex drive, uh, sexual inhibitions that people have. So she coined the term sexological hypnosis. And then there's another component of hypnosis which can be used for erotic hypnosis. This is when you can use hypnosis to enhance, to make interesting what uh, sex can be like in the bedroom. So she also talked about hypnogasm. This is when you have an orgasm through hypnosis. And she talked about how you can use erotic hypnosis for intimate bonding, achieving erotic bondage, or even trans states. 
She covered briefly about safety and how this is entirely possible because our brain is our biggest sexual organ. And Amy will actually be returning next week where she will be diving in much deeper, talking about how you can be... Um, let me look up the description. How you can be totally hot in the bedroom. How you can be a hot and hypnotic lover. So during the show next week, she will be talking about how we can use hypnosis to increase pleasure, sensation, and fantasy. And she will be introducing a sample of fantasy hypnosis to listeners. That's for next week's show. So if you want to prepare for next week's show, it would be good to listen to Amy's show, episode 19, where she began to introduce hypnosis and next week we'll be delving more into erotic hypnosis. In episode 20, I had Paul Bag, and he talked about repressed sexuality in the 21st century. And he introduced Tao and Tantra, and he talked about his own personal background being, 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 uh, seeing his mother being uh, abused, and how he realized that he wanted to be an advocate for female sexuality, especially women who've been through trauma and abuse. So he gave four ways in which we can make decisions to become more sexual. The first one is first deciding that sex is important. Second, paying attention to our desires, feelings, and sensations. The third one, practicing pampering. And the fourth, receiving, giving ourselves permission to receive what we really want. So these were the four things that I learned from Paul Beck during the show. So tune in to Arrow's Evolution. We're going to have a short break and we'll talk more about the other guests. Bringing you the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio, your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Welcome to the gathering around my kitchen table on Equilarium FM, Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join my guests as we integrate spirituality into everyday reality with vibrant conversations, inspired interviews, and my latest channeled guidance to inspire and brighten your day. I'm Claire Johnson, and together, We'll be raising vibrations across the nations. If you remember living fearlessly, joyfully, and in a world filled with adventure, happiness, pleasure, and unbridled living, then this show is for you. Join me, Dame Nicole Brandon, as I bring you the world's top experts in wealth, creativity, flow, seat edging technology, space, wellness, health, love, lust, and passion, all merging together each week here at the Hub of Happiness, Mondays at 6 p.m. Pacific Time and 9 p.m. Eastern Time on Passionate Living, where you can ride on the magic carpet ride of living and learn how to lead a passionately wild, exciting, and outrageously amazing life. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM.
Welcome back to Eros Evolution, where sexuality and spirituality meets. This is Dr. Martha Tara Lee of Eros Coaching, and you can find me on eroscoaching.com. You can also find the show Eros Evolution on Facebook. So I have a Facebook page, you can follow me there. And if you're interested to give me feedback, comments, suggestions, and also recommend a guest for this show, you can always email me at info at arrowscoaching.com. That's E-R-O-S-coaching.com. So coming back to today's episode of doing a reflection and a recapping of all the guests that I've had, I'm doing a reflection and recap of the past 14 shows and I've just talked about the first four shows episode 17 to 20 and I'm moving on to episode 21. In episode 21 we had Elise Severasi and she talked about self-pleasure your way to self-love. She started a revolution called self-pleasure revolution and she has a Basically, what she does is she has a monthly campaign for women who wants to learn how to get deeper in their self-pleasuring. So for her, she doesn't use the word masturbation. She uses self-pleasure instead because to her, masturbation is a very hard word. And self-pleasure is much more about the softer, subtle sensations of pleasure. For her, she talked about the link between sex equals spirit and during the show, she talked about how to do self-pleasuring and why regular self-pleasuring is important, what one should be thinking or can, can work around their conflict of self-pleasuring if they were partnered. She talked about the difference between masturbation and self-pleasure as well. So if you listen to the show, you would know that um, Elisa Varasi, she had a very gentle spirit to, to the way she was presenting her revolution. And you really want to listen to this show. I, I, this is one of my favorite shows uh, in, from all my guests so far. And in talking about why my, uh, self-pleasure is uh, regularly is important, she talked about how if we are more present and loving to ourselves, then this will affect the way we show up in other areas of our lives. When we love ourselves in a very deep way, then obviously there would be things in our lives that um, we will move away from naturally and we will not put up with being treated in bad ways and also we are just going to be much more loving, assertive versus being aggressive. She also talked about how women who are sexually more aware and are able then to achieve their sexual potential because we have this huge capacity for pleasure and as we begin to go deeper and deeper into it, this is a very conscious way to help us be more open uh, through sex but it helps us to be more open physically and emotionally to all aspects of life. Being able to connect with our yoni, which is a sacred world to refer to female genitals. Connecting with our yoni is, is an opportunity to connect, providing ourselves with that loving space to come home so that we return to ourselves. She talked about sex toys as well. So anyway, uh, do listen to episode 21 Self-pleasure your way to self-love. In episode 22, I had Robbie Vergal, and she is, like myself, a sexuality educator, and she teaches Tantra. During the show, she introduced the ways in which we can balance the divine masculine and the divine feminine. So during the show, she talked about what a lot of people are interested about, which is Tantra. She explained what is masculine and feminine, and also the, the what mature masculine and mature feminine mean, means. During the show, she talked about uh, uh, not just Tantra, but she also introduced the concept of sex magic and the practical ways in which we can do so in begin for beginners would be to first connect with sound, breath, 
movement to ignite sexual healing and to light that fire within us. To do so, we would uh, be able to, we would start by doing kegels or pelvic floor, mus uh, pelvic floor um, muscle exercises. And basically, the intention would be to move energy from up from the earth back into our bodies and to raise energy so that we can send energy to the place in which we want to manifest. So, um, so there's a difference between thinking and doing versus just feeling. And she talked about the link between our thoughts, beliefs, attitudes, and behaviors, how all this affects the law of attraction, how we, we the way we show up and the, the things that we attract into our lives. So I, I, I really love having her on the show. She is, was able to talk about uh, the link between uh, the, our life journey of healing ourselves and being able to grow. People who are much more connected uh, with their feminine and masculine sides. And this, that's, has in, this is in no way we're talking about gender. All of us have the masculine and feminine side within ourselves. And when we are mature about it, we are more aligned, we are more balanced. We are more steady. We don't get stuck, and we don't. Um, we are able to move forward without being too rigid, aggressive, or wobbly. So do tune in to episode twenty-two if you are interested in understanding more about tantra. In episode twenty-four, I had Doctor Cat, and she talked about the merit sex solution this is a show that is extremely practical so for couples out there who find that they're in a long-term relationship perhaps they're feeling that they are kind of like in the rut and they're having routine during sex and bored then this is a really great show dr kate cat is um, basically just much more accomplished than i am uh, so far in my career she's done so many things published so many books and one of and the show actually talked about her book, which had five premises to getting out of the rut. And so I'll just go into it right now without giving too much of an introduction. So the first tip that she had is to have skin-to-skin -skin contact 10 minutes a day, four times a week. And this is actually extremely profound because once you are much more connected, then then the bonding hormone oxy, uh, oxytocin will be released. You break down the barriers of not touching each other. You uh, con you harmonize your breathing, and then you are you are, you know from there, it just promotes a sense of well being and connectedness with your partner, and this can facilitate moving on to love making if that's what you want. So anyway, the first tip was ten minutes of skin to skin contact four times a week. The second a rule of thumb that, she, thumb that she had was to not focus on penetrative sex. When we are in relationships, we find ourselves getting stuck in, oh, you know, uh, penetrative sex is the way, is the right way of having sex. So moving away from penetrative sex is one of the ways to break out of the routine. The third one is to focus on make out sex. So it doesn't have to be long, just just having lots of outer play. The fourth one is moving away from being fixated on having an orgasm. The more pressure you give yourself to have an orgasm, sometimes the worse it is. And the fifth tip that she had, the fifth premise of her married sex solution was two minutes of sex talk four times a week. That's eight minutes a day plus the 10 minutes of skin-to-skin uh, -skin contact four minutes, four times a week. So that would be a total of 40 minutes plus eight minutes. That's 48 minutes of investment that you put into your relationship. If you think about it, you start off by talking about sex for two minutes. It helps break, break down this big elephant in the room. People who talk about sex, people who are much more comfortable, who communicate about sex, who learn about sex, and read up about sex, they are more likely to be more, more comfortable with sex and therefore they would actually have 
a different relationship with their sexuality, not just sex. And so these were the five things that Dr. Kat introduced during the show. You do want to listen to it because this is also one of my favorites. It's uh, episode 23. In episode 24, I had a very different guest and her name is Sharon Hayes. She talked about how entrepreneurs and executives can thrive by integrating sexuality and spirituality into their lives. What well, was very interesting, so this, you know, most of the time I have uh, fellow colleagues, fellow sexologists, fellow sexuality educators, and this time I had somebody completely different. Sharon Hayes is a very accomplished serial entrepreneur, and she was, t- she was really coming from a business perspective, but even then, she talked about how sex was very important to people who came from a corporate background. She talked about how, through her work, she saw that the rate of happiness that we have in the different areas of our lives is linked. So if we were to break them down into different categories, there would be sexuality, spirituality, finance, education, slash learning, health. So mainly these five areas that she gave. So I'm repeating, sex, spirit, finance, education, health. And she talked about how if one of them was the lowest denominator or lowest number, that limits us in our growth. That limits our peak performance and how far, how high we go. What this means is if we're not comfortable with our sexuality and not comfortable with our spirituality, then a person's success in life is also affected. Whoa, that was profound for me. Sharon also talked about um, Alpha and Beta, and we'll talk more about her show after this break. Bringing a more conscious lifestyle to your world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. What if living didn't have to be so serious? What if you could move beyond your problems with greater confidence and ease than you've ever imagined? Throw your labels out the window and join the irreverent therapist for practical tips and a very different way of approaching the changes you would like to create. Marilyn Bradford and Pam Hodling have empowered hundreds of people to come out of self-judgment, quit looking to experts, and begin to create the lives they desire. Join us Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern on The Irreverent Therapist Show. Live with Medium Lisa Phoenix, Mediumship Messages and Musings, explores mediumship and all things metaphysical. Lisa Phoenix invites you to reach above and beyond your everyday experiences to explore new dimensions in the spirit world. She will do live readings to connect callers to their loved ones in spirit, shares engaging stories and teachings from her own personal experience, and will have intriguing conversations with other mediums, spiritual teachers, and healers to help you understand the metaphysical world so you can connect to these forces in your day-to-day life. Join your host on this magical and metaphysical journey into the world of spirit every Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Ohm Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.ohmtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Ohm Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. 
the best of holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. You are listening to Aries Evolution on the Om Times Radio Network. You can share this show with your friends right now by sending them the link omtimes.com forward slash mobile. With this link, your friends will be able to listen to the show without needing to download any app. As you probably know, some radio shows are not compatible with Androids, and so it can be quite challenging for some people to listen to a podcast. With our technology, you don't need any app, you just need this link, omtimes.com forward slash mobile. So in today's show, we are doing a recap and a reflection of all my guests in the past 14 shows. And we are at show number episode 24. And just now I was talking about Sharon Hayes, how she uh, is from the corporate world and how she talked about how entrepreneurs and executives can thrive by integrating sexuality and spirituality into their lives. I talked about just now how she t- how we are limited by the lowest denominator in the five areas of our lives, sex, spirit, finance, education, and health. She talked about alpha and beta and what that means. Uh, when we are all constantly in our alpha, especially for women, this affects our sexuality and this affects our sex drive. So she talked about how we we at times dress comfortably versus dressing sexy and that also affects the way we feel in our bodies. She recommended ways in which we can maintain balance in our lives and this applies to uh, all genders. She talked about how she personally does 20 minutes of reflection daily. She practices gratitude by having a gratitude journal listing down the things that she's grateful for. And she talked about how scheduling time for space is so important because by allowing herself to have space, she also begins to uh, allow the, I don't know, for me, I'm just paraphrasing the fun, playful side of her to emerge. So that's episode 24, Sharon Hayes. You would want to check out uh, that. In episode 25, I had my friend Laura Doe come in and she talked about the art and science of female arousal. She produced a DVD series called also The Art and Science of Female Arousal. And I've um, actually watched it since the show and I loved it. I loved it because it's not just educational. It's fun. It's interactive. She had guests on the show and she um, she had interesting creative visuals. Um, talking about different parts of the female anatomy, the vulva, it's much more than you would ever get in any um, medical scientific uh, book. And um, she also talks about different philosophies and ancient practices, and, uh, including the jade egg. So you you probably want to check out her product called The Art and Science of Female Arousal. So during the show, however, she talked about the importance of pleasure, why it's important, how we've lost touch with pleasure. She also gave tips, being a parent herself, on how parents could t- uh, approach sex- sex- sexuality, uh, the sex talk with their kids. So you want to listen to episode 25 because it's, it's something very important to women. Like Women don't know our own genitals. And she talks about it in a very loving, positive, empowering way. So you would want to check out episode 25. In episode 26, that was on July 10th, uh, we talked about the emergence of a modern Tantra goddess. And that person was Taryn Harvey. She actually talked more about her journey her personal life journey of how she became a tantra goddess and her background was very interesting she actually came from a very um psychotherapy background and she she also came from the corporate world where she was in a pharmaceutical background and all the drugs all um you know she just started to move away from it because she was not well with her in her body she was having 
uh, adrenal fatigue, and then she started to uh, she worked as a sex worker, and then she was also doing her psychotherapy training at the same time. Then she uh, began to go into tantra, and that's what she's doing now. She's teaching tantra. She does、uh, body work, and she also talked about how all this is in her book called Trust. So you will be able to find out more about Taryn Harvey in episode twenty six. In episode twenty seven, I had Dr. Marlene. Malini Wesemann talking about cyber infidelity. So, Dr. Malini Wesemann has this brand called Dr. Eve, and she's very famous in South Africa. She is.、Uh, she came out with this book, Cyber Infidelity, because of how Ashley Madison actually went into South Africa, and she was not happy about it. She was very vocal about it. And as she started having more and more of her clients、uh, wanting to talk about、uh, opening up their relationships and、um, making sense of what infidelity meant for them,、uh, Dr. Malini Wesemann realized that she needed to find out more. So she actually partnered with Ashley Madison and did extensive study. With、um, the database, and they have a huge database of thirty-seven million subscribers. And as you probably know, Ashley Madison was hacked into recently, so their da- database had this risk of being compromised and all the identities of the people being leaked. So this happened one week after the show. So it's a very interesting、uh, show because she shared how. Uh, she was very surprised by some of the findings from her study, such as how women were the person who were the aggressor online. They were just as aggressive, just as assertive as the men in seeking out、uh, connections. And a lot of the people who were online were actually taking it offline and actually meeting in person. So the show actually coincided with the launch of her book called Cyber Infidelity, based on her research. On the database of Ashley Madison, I also read the book, and so during the show, I asked some questions around the show, around the book. Sorry. So you want to check out episode twenty-seven if you are interested about the topic of cyber infidelity. What does infidelity even mean, right? And how does this affect us? Because we are in the day of technology, and so everyone's connected and. If you are not doing it, then of course you know of people who are thinking about it or are doing some form of it. How do you、um, feel about it, actually? So this is a good show to listen to. Episode twenty-seven. In episode twenty-eight, I had my friend、uh, Lee Harrington talking about gender and trans talk. So、uh, trans talk, sorry. So we talked about、um, how. We opened the show by talking about how、uh, Ashley Madison was hacked into, and he talked about the need for privacy. And then we talked about, we went on to talk about all the different kinds of transgender terms, which、uh, a lot of us are not aware of, such as、uh, third gender and、um, uh, gender fluid, gender variant, gender blender. What does butch femme mean? What does、uh, M to F, M, M to F, female to male, a female, a male to female, and female to male? What what do they mean?、Uh, he he emphasized on how、uh, sometimes we use the word choice when actually it's really not a choice for some people, and there was an emphasis on the importance of love, compassion, and awareness. If、uh, you know, for the enlightened listeners out there, those of us who don't really know how to address someone, we're not sure of their gender. Sometimes it's good to ask them, and this is this is where we we talked about how we can、um, make peace with、um, how we get confused sometimes we pronounce ourselves. And so、uh, Lee Harrington was able to give some practical tips 
on how we can uh, do that. Uh, so just to highlight, one of the takeaways during the show is he talked about how our sexuality is as who we want to be with and our gender is who we are. So that's something that uh, you can have uh, food for thought. In episode 29, I had Serena Gaia or Serena Andolini, uh, who calls herself Serena Gaia. She, ta- she actually talked about make love the ecology of your life um, with uh, Lindsay Hagerman. She, uh, both of them were promoting their book, Ecosexuality. Um, I wanted to have uh, both of them on the show because I wanted different perspectives. So uh, Serena Gaia, she talked about well, we started the show by talking about Cecil the lion that was beheaded, and we talked about um, really how I was affected by the death of the lion and how everybody around the world were and were really up up at arms, angry with the men who beheaded the lion and who wanted him killed. So Serena helped uh, me understand uh, how really being ecosexual has moved away from just being a tree hugger or nudist. It's really about being able to be playful with our lives and being able to understand that uh, human beings, we we have an eco- ecosystem within our bodies. We have our, our kidneys, our lungs and our heart and all these different systems within our body and which makes up an ecosystem. And by an extension, we are also a bigger part of a bigger e- ecosystem, Earth. So she was able to explain during the show what ecosex uh, means, ecosystem means, and how e- ecology is a part of um, our sexuality and our spirituality. So more after this break. The cutting edge of conscious radio, Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Do you have time to read that inspiring book or that blog post you've been meaning to get to? In your busy world, how do you improve yourself and keep your life going? I'm Lisa Kay, and my Between Heaven and Earth radio show can transform your life just by listening. Be uplifted with inspiring topics, positive stories, and ideas that really work. Between Heaven and Earth Radio is conscious living for your soul every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Welcome to the gathering around my kitchen table on Equilarium FM, Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join my guests as we integrate spirituality into everyday reality with vibrant conversations, inspired interviews, and my latest channeled guidance to inspire and brighten your day. I'm Claire Johnson, and together we'll be raising vibrations across the nations. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. As difficult as it is to believe, there are places in Africa where human traffickers sell albino children and their body parts for use in magic rituals. Humanity Healing International is actively working in Uganda to change this paradigm. The Albino Rescue Project finds albino children who are at risk and places them in safe schools and environments where they can learn and grow free from fear. To learn more or to sponsor a child, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Feed your soul with waves of consciousness on Ohm Times Radio. Welcome back to Eros Evolution, where sexuality and spirituality meets. This is Dr. Martha Tara Lee, and in today's show, we are doing a recap and reflect of all the past 14 episodes of this show. And um, every, every show, I've uh, been inviting different guests, and... Um, uh, each of them uh, 
have uh, contributed towards the discussion of the link between sexuality and spirituality. And often they bring uh, to the table uh, takeaways for us. And uh, today I'm, I'm uh, sharing what I've learned from them. So just now I was talking about episode 29, uh, where I had Serena Gaia make love the ecology of your life. And right now I'm moving on to episode uh, 30, which is the last show that I'm summarizing, uh, which was uh, last week by uh, Zahava Grace. And she talked about love making dances. So when we, when we, when you read, when you think of the title, love making dances, you think of, okay, so how do you do this? Do you actually dance when you're making love? Uh, no, actually that's not what uh, Zahava's uh, movement is really about. Uh, it's love. Okay, you have love, and it's the love that's making the dance. <laughs> so it can be misleading um, the way you read it. So anyway, this is um, what her movement is really about. She talked uh, during the show about the link between spirit, dance, and sex. And I really found the show an expensive one. I felt so big and expanded in my heart and in my body, just uh, listening to her and talking with her. I really enjoyed having her on the show and I'm looking to have her back. She talked about um, how it's so important to have gratitude and pleasure um, when you're in a relationship and she actually does facilitate love making dances for couples as well. So during the show she actually gave some very very fantastic tips that I, I you know fantastic things that I never learned before. Um, so I asked her how people who don't have any training in dance, uh, don't have access to her. Uh, she's based in, uh, in uh, Berkeley, California, USA. Um, if, if people don't have access to her, then what can they do? So she talked about uh, how even for people who are beginners, we can actually begin by putting our hand on our heart. When we put our hand on our heart, we can then start to bring our awareness to the beating of our heart and the movement within. So whether we know it or not, whether we think we have two left feet, we don't dance, we can't dance, we are constantly in movement. And just from tapping from that point within, movement or more movement can begin to emerge. So I really loved um, talking with her she even even just even just that you know um, was able to further my appreciation of um, dance. We talked during the show about the difference between being and doing, and the the link um, um, between between the two. This um, uh, is is that is important. So. I didn't talk about that during the show, but um, for me, it was how there was a link between feeling expanded and big versus contracting. Since life is about change and we get uh, hit around, we get uh, ups and downs, it's very easy to go into fear and pain and to contract. So movement, dance, spirit, all these things help us to come back to ourselves and to be reminded of the need to expand, to be big, to show up. So that to me was linked to what she was talking about, how our sexual energy is powerful when we invite spirit into our body, we have a tremendous power and we are essentially in sexual meditation with ourselves. This allows us and supports us to know our purpose. So one of the things that I just want to summarize that I took away right at the last 15 minutes of the show last week was how she talked about when we have sex with someone, we are merging our energies with that person and sometimes it can be hard to come back to ourselves. So those of you out there who are sensitive, who does energy work, 
uh, you know what I mean. So during the show, she talks about three ways in which we can come back to ourselves, and they are number one. First, you rub your palms, you generate heat, and then you run your palms over your skin. So you don't necessarily have to touch your body, you just run it over your skin. This helps you to bring yourself back to your body. The second thing that she suggested was to do grounding through exhalation of your breath in a downward movement through your spine. So you imagine you have, say, a mouth at each foot. A mouth at each foot. So as you breathe in, you exhale downwards into your body, through your foot back into earth. So this is an extremely grounding way of breathing as well. This also helps you to come back to your body after sex. And then the third thing she suggested was to repeat your name to yourself out loud, if you can, uh, again and again. So like, you know, Martha, Martha, Martha. So coming back. To your body. I really love these uh, tips and uh, I'm going to share this with my clients and other people uh, in my work in future. So this is pretty much a recap of all the 14 episodes that I've had so far and uh, next week we have Amy Marsh. She'll be talking about hypnosis and um, the the show will be talking about how you can use hypnosis to increase pleasure, sensation, fantasy, enjoyment in your own relationships. You'll be able to experience a brief sample of fantasy hypnosis in next week's show called How to Be a Hot and Hypnotic Lover with Amy Marsh. Okay, so let me just um, just share very briefly since I have like maybe two minutes left on uh, what I've gotten away from all the 14 episodes. First of all, I have a lot of gratitude and appreciation for all the kind, beautiful souls out there who are teaching people how to be much more in touch with their sexuality and with their spirituality. So a big thank you to all my guests out there and my future guests. I've, uh, I've learned uh, humility. I've learned to be inspired from my guests because of um, not just the 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 variety of work that they are doing but also the depth in which they are taking people by first being deep uh, with their spirit and their sexuality themselves and as a result of being so inspired by my guests I have decided to myself be more connected with nature so I'm launching this uh, new uh, workshop series called Talk to the Trees. So I'll be leading people to going out into the park and um, actually sitting in front of a tree and actually connecting consciously uh, with tree energy and um, uh, doing different forms of meditations in, in nature, lying on grass and also with trees. So I'll also be uh, beginning uh, finally after sitting on it for a long time, I'm going to be beginning to run uh, red tents in Singapore. So uh, red tent is when uh, women traditionally would gather during a new moon. And during this time uh, in the past, women would also be bleeding. And this was a time for them to rest and to connect with tribe and with uh, sisterhood. So I'll be running such circles in Singapore. And on top of that, besides the new moon, I'll also be running full moon meditations open to both men and women. And uh, when we when we absorb moon energy, it helps with our our coming out of nervous system and with hormonal balance. It also helps with um, well, at least it's believed to help with manifestation. And so that's what I'll, I'm I was finding myself inspired to do. So if you're interested in my events, I know not all of you are in Singapore, but for those of you who, who are interested or who have friends in Singapore, you can help me share the word, spread the message, and um, you can find all my events uh, listed. I actually just put them all up yesterday. You can find them on arrowscoaching.com backslash events. That's uh, eroscoaching.com backslash events. And that, that will be my events page. Also, I've uh, just finished my second book called uh, Orgasmic Yoga. This is where we, t we 
really we're basically masturbating consciously for 30 days and um, when you masturbate for 30 minutes for 30 days then uh, your masturbation practice would deepen you would want to think of different creative ways in which to self-pleasure and in my book I also have uh, Elise Savarasi who also talked about self-pleasure I just summarized her show just now and uh, she also has an essay in my book or a, an interview uh, of her opinions in my book. So in my book, I, I, I talked about seven different ways in which we can self-pleasure uh, much more consciously with, uh, with kegels uh, or pelvic floor exercises. So I talked about kegels, breath, touch, movement, sound, fantasy. I talked about the raw porn in my book and I introduced 30 different practices in which one can self-pleasure. So my book is now available on Kindle, on Amazon. You can actually do a search and you'll be able to find my book pop-up called Orgasmic Yoga. So this has been Dr. Martha Tara Lee on Eros Evolution. I hope you tune in next week for Amy Marsh. And um, um, yeah, have a great week and I'll hope to see you here. Um, hear from you very soon.